So um, we've looked at octahedral. Um, octahedral is when you have a central atom with six different bonds to it, or six, a uh, better said, octahedral in terms of the electron arrangement is when you have six electron groups, which we see here, one, two, three, four, five, six. That could be six bonds, as we see here. Or it could be five bonds and a lone pair, as we'll see in IF5, iodine pentafluoride. So if we were to draw the Lewis structure, we would put iodine in the middle. We'd put our fluorines around it. And of course, this has uh, iodine has more than an octet, so we would have our pairs around the fluorines, which all have an octet. <clears throat> and the problem with this is we have um, we know that we need to have five, uh, or I'm sorry, six total groups of electrons, and we only have five here. So I'm going to put the extra group right here, and that's my lone pair. So um, Lewis structure really doesn't help us much with the shape. So let's uh, do this according to Vesper. Again, Vesper meaning that electrons are trying to get as far away from each other as possible. So I'm going to put my iodine in the center. And then um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to draw a little rectangle around the iodine. And this is going to be my plane. That's why I'm drawing this. I'm using a straight edge. OK, so those don't necessarily represent bonds but they do represent the plane where four of the fluorines are going to be. And then we're going to have a fluorine uh, directly above. So I drew that, that square or that uh, tr um, rectangle to give us a a perspective of the three-dimensional structure. Okay, and then I'm going to have a pair of electrons. Again, that's my sixth um, electron group. And now I'm going to draw my bonds. So I'm going to have a bond which will be drawn as a wedge coming out of the plane towards the fluorine. Then I'm going to have another wedge here. So those wedges again show that the bond is coming out towards us. And then I'm going to have my hash marks going back, starting wide and going narrower to show that it's getting farther away. towards that back fluorine. Okay, so uh, typically you would think that this angle right here is 90 degrees, but this lone pair of electrons is pushing up on all of these four in the plane. So um, there is going to be an angle that is less than 90 degrees. All of them are going to be less than 90 degrees. That's because this, the repulsion from those two electrons is going to push everything up. So it's not, it's not going to be flat. It's going to be like if you um, put your hand flat and then lift your fingers up even higher. So they're not going to be exactly 90. They're going to be a little closer to this uh, bond right here. That's because the lone pair 
bonding pair repulsion is greater than, that's this lone pair repelling all these bonding pairs, that repulsion is greater than the bonding pair, bonding pair repulsion. Let me say it a different way. This lone pair is pushing on these bonds here, pushing harder and pushing them up towards this bond here. This bond is pushing back this uh, bond on top, but it is pushing less. It's repelling less than this um, lone pair of electrons at the bottom. That's why we say lone pair bonding pair repulsion is greater than the bonding pair bonding pair repulsion and all angles are less than 90. Let's draw the shape here. Clean that up. And now I want to um, kind of put again in perspective. These are not bonds, but we're going to draw lines down to show that I have this square pyramidal shape. So now you can see the pyramid and you can see the square. So it's important that we note the shape.